carbon dioxide. The elite of this world and governments want us to hate carbon dioxide. Want us to get hysterical about it. And the headlines this past week is that CO2 hits historic highs. Four 415 parts per million. The plants certainly love CO2. Our bodies certainly love CO2. It's a necessary gas. It's a gas of life. Plants eat CO2 and produce more oxygen and more food and more ability to take the CO2 the higher the CO2 goes. So the planet, the forests and all the plants on the planet are thriving in these higher historic CO2 levels. Of course it's a short, you know, they, so in human history they say it's record-breaking. And of course, we don't go very far back in human history. But if you go back in history itself, I don't know how long man has been around, a couple of hundred thousand years. But in the past, CO2 levels have been much higher. The planet's still here. Life thrived through many millenniums. CO2, our bodies are very sensitive to it. Most people today are breathing too fast, getting rid of too much CO2. We breathe. When we exercise, we breathe faster because we're creating a lot of CO2. It's one of the reasons exercise is so healthy. We have more CO2 in our blood. We have more oxygen. They're like the perfect yin-yang. Problem is with people who don't exercise or people who are breathing too fast when they're sleeping, when they're watching TV, when they're eating, when they're reading, sitting in front of their computers. Problem is when you breathe too fast and you're not doing anything is you're getting rid of too much CO2. Go, CO2 levels go down in the blood and less oxygen gets delivered to the cells. So we actually need more CO2. Most people at this point are deficient in CO2, which creates hypoxic, low oxygen conditions in the body, which causes disease. So it's not plants that enjoy more CO2. We need more CO2 and CO2 is used as a medicine. When you take oxygen you know, out of a uh, pressurized bottle in the hospitals, they have to put CO2 in those bottles. Oxygen is poisonous without certain percentage of CO2. So, but the world is selling a panic about CO2, that it's driving man-made global warming, when there is no real science to associate with that, and the scientists and experts in these fields about gases, about the history of atmosphere, even, even NASA shows that it's a cooling gas, that in the upper atmospheres it helps the planet cool, not heat. We do have climate change, but it has nothing to do with CO2. Right now it has a lot to do with the sun. The sun as every physicist knows and astrophysicist concentrate on has cycles, 11 year cycles, 400 year cycles and longer cycles. Right now we're going through a grand solar minimum. 
This is driving climate change. Because as the sun goes, cycles down, and I'm not sure how many decades it's going to last, we face cooling. Don't have to be afraid of CO2. They're talking about panicking over a few parts per million. I've written a lot about this. I can't get into the science of it here on a video. But CO2 is our friend. It's used as a medicine. If you have gangrene or some problems, you can put a bag on. This is actually a medical device where you pump in to a bag and put in CO2. Helps healing. Sodium bicarbonate. Why is it such a wonderful medicine? When you squeeze a lemon in it, you can see a glass of sodium bicarbonate, like lemon or acid in the stomach. Lemons and acid turns bicarbonate into CO2. And it's wonderful because it drives up oxygen levels. So CO2 is a friend. It's a necessary friend. So beware of people selling you, trying to uh, try to get you to hate CO2, the most ridiculous thing in modern history.